Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We'll start the session in two minutes, okay? All right, so let's start. Um, if you remember previous session, I left one question that I uh, said that I'll discuss it in the next session. That was uh, in the May 2022 paper, if you remember. Yes, sir. Uh, we had that, take it just wait a moment. Yeah, uh, in the May 2022 paper, we had a question uh, with that was, okay, just let me pull it up.
Just a moment, okay? Yes, sir. My screen visible? Yes. Sir. Yes, sir, visible. Yeah, so this was the question, if you remember, like L was a non empty list of distinct positive integers, right? And uh, we needed to kind of determine what was the value of val, the variable val at the end of the okay, algorithm, yes. right? <laughs> and if you remember clearly, I said that uh, L only had the values in the range 1 to 10, right? Yes. Right, I said this. Only and val at the final will always have the value 55. Right? Yes. And I also said yes. that if L had a value out of the range of this, any other value, let's say 13, right, in this list, then this while loop will never terminate because L will never be become empty. This for loop has the job of, you know, clearing L, right? Making L empty. It won't remove 13, the number 13 from L, right? So yes. that was, that pass was clear. But then, you know, a lot of you raised the question, but what if L did not have in, like, it only had numbers in the range 1 to 10, but let's say it did not have the number 5. Let's say uh, 1, 2, 4, 6, 7. 8, 9, 10, right? It doesn't have the number 5. Okay, what about then? Then, if you run it through this for loop, right, what does this for loop does? Is that it, you know, y takes the value in this range. What is this range? It's 1 to 10, right? So, yes. any number is present, any number in this range is present in this list, it will remove that. If the number is not present in this list, it will add to it. Okay. So since one is present in the list, it will get removed, right? Why? If y is equal to one, right? Y is in L, so we'll remove it, right? Same is the case for two, three, and four. But when y takes the value of five, let's say, right? It won't find five in the list, right? Yes. So we're adding five to it. Is that clear? Yes. Yes. Right. Then we'll remove six, seven, eight, nine, and ten as usual. So after the end of at the beginning, we had all the numbers except five. At the end of this for loop, we only list is just is one element that's five. Okay. Since L is not empty, we still again go into this for loop, right? Again, y is set to one. Now y one is is one in the list? No. So we end up adding one to the list, right? And is two in the yes. list? No. So we add two, we add three, we add four. Now five is already in the list, right? So we end up removing it, right? We uh, we go inside yes. this if block. So we remove five. For y equal to six, we add this, we add seven, eight, nine, and 10, right? So you can see that we came back to the original list we started with. Yeah. Right. And you can now see that again, list is not empty. So we'll come back into the for loop. And again, if you run through the for loop, L will now again be five. And this alternating sequence will keep on going forever and will never, the while loop will never terminate. So for this while loop to yes. terminate, L has to contain all the first 10 numbers, one, two, three, all the way to 10. Only then will this for loop will make this L empty and only then a while loop will terminate and will print the value of val, which is the sum of all integers in L. That's 55. I hope this is clear. Yes, I clear. All right. So that was one doubt that uh, was not clear in the last session. So we'll now continue as usual. Uh, we were doing the September 2022 paper. And if you remember, we had two questions left. We did up to question number 11, right? Which options in this range? You know, uh, zero. Do you remember this question? 
we had to set yes, the yes, values sir. of a b c such that we print the value zero right so we did this so we'll move on to the next one question 12 which is this right uh select yes. all snippets of code that print the following thing so basically what this question tells you is that select all the pieces of code that calculate the first 10 fibonacci numbers right and then print them in a particular way so this way let's say i take a smaller value of n let's say i take n equal to 5. so what this code needs to co compute is the first five fibonacci numbers what are those starting from zero it's one zero one one two three and five right yes sir these two values are always known it's given to us as you can see assume that zero and one are the first two fibonacci numbers right so we need to print these fibonacci numbers in this way so we need to the output should be five line output the, out, the number of lines in the output should be equal to n so the first line will print the first fibonacci numbers right in the second line, we'll print the first two Fibonacci numbers, so 0 and 1. Third line, third line will three. print the first three, so 0, 1, 1. Yes. Fourth line, the first four. Right. Let me just demark it here. Five, fifth line will print. Okay, if the first four, one, two, three, what did I do? Wrong. Yeah, one, one, two, three. So these are the first one. I, I added this extra. Don't forget. Right. So these are the first five Fibonacci. So did you understand the, what you need to do, right? Any doubts in this? No, sir. No, sir. All no, right. Sir. So we need to select all those codes which produces this out. Okay. What about the first option? Is this correct? So we created a list that all already has the first two Fibonacci numbers. Now we need to compute. So if we want to compute the first n Fibonacci numbers, we know the first two. So we all that we are left to compute is the remaining n minus two Fibonacci numbers. Is that clear? Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Right. So this is what this for loop is computing. See the range is n minus two, which means we have to this for loop is computing the remaining n minus two Fibonacci numbers. So we are computing the Fibonacci number the uh ith fibonacci number with this we're taking the last and the second last value adding them up which creates the ith fibonacci number and we're adding it to the back of uh l so if l is 0 comma 1 right what is the third fibonacci number it's also one right so what we're going to do with yes. first last number and the second last number add them up that's one so the new l will be equal to 0 comma 1 comma 1 okay so and so on and so forth, until we get all these in the list all of this in the list right so this computes sir, yeah sir why does this loop run till n minus 2 because we are computing the remaining n minus 2 fibonacci numbers we have to compute n fibonacci numbers right we have already been given two here two numbers the first two numbers Remaining is the n minus 2 numbers, and that is why the range is also n minus 2. Okay. Yeah. And now this part of the for loop, what it does is uh, print the required output. So this triangular output that you can see in the example, its job is to print this. Okay. So we go from 1 to n because we have to print n lines, remember. Okay. We have to print n lines yes. of output. So that is where the outer for loop, right? Now, if you look at each line, we have to print a different number of uh, numbers in each line, right? Each of these numbers are space separated. So you have a zero and then a space and then one and then space, right? So if you look at the question again, right? There should be a single space after every number. Specifically, there should be a single space after the last number in any given line. So we and ignore there's a space over here as well so we don't have to worry about no space uh being uh, or not you know removing space at the last time so we have to print n lines for the first loop and this inner loops job is to print a single line itself right so so let's say i takes the value of one starts at one right 
now the inner loops range is defined to be range of i so this case for uh, j will take the value zero only yeah it will run one time right so this kind of signifies that we just want to print the first fibonacci number in the sequence uh, in line number in the in this particular line okay let's say i is 4 okay now j's range will be 0 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 which says we want to print the first four fibonacci number each of these iterations will print one uh, fibonacci number in the list and print, uh, add a space here as specified in the print statement right so this is what the inner loop does kind of prints the i uh, kind of uh, up to ith fibonacci numbers in a line right when we come out of this for loop inner for loop we print a new line so that we can go ahead and print the next line of fibonacci numbers okay so this is what it does any doubts on this one sir no, no. Sir, why in the fourth yes. line range is not starting from 0 comma n plus 1 or simply n plus 1 uh because if let's say 0 to n plus 1 how many iterations are that how many iterations will the for loop run? Uh, n plus n. one iteration. Still n. It will run n plus one, right? Yes, sir. Right. So we have to print the n lines only. We don't have to print n plus one lines, right? So that is why we start from one. If we want to, you know, uh, start from zero, then instead of n plus one, we have to just write n here. Sir, but starting with zero, there is one more problem as now. yeah. If you start from zero, then this one works. Yeah, yes, then with the inner loops range will not be defined. So that is why we start from one. Okay, Bhumika. Yes, sir. All right. So based on this explanation of this option, is this option correct? Does it does, uh, give the desired output? Yes, Anyone? Sir. Yes, sir. It will give. Yeah, this one is a correct option. Sir, why are you okay. printing the new line the line? So, so that we can move into the next line, right? So this loop prints just one line of output, right? For the first iteration when i is equal to 1, right? This will print this line. Oh, this okay, okay. This. It is in the first right? okay, So we use this print to move on to the next line. All right. What about the second option? Oh, okay. What about the second option? Anyone? So it minute. seems to be correct. Right. We again do the same thing, but instead we use a while loop. Right. I is initialized to 0, L. Again, in the first option, we you know added first two numbers. But now we have uh, initialized it to an empty list. We go until I is less than N. Now you can see that I, we started I at 0. Right. So we need to keep it strictly less than n so that we can do exactly n iterations. Because we need to compute only n Fibonacci numbers, right? So if i's value is 0, we add 0 to l. So this kind of if this part of the thing computes just the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so if i is 0, i is 0, right? We add what? 0 to l, right? increment i by 1 then i's value is 1 so we come to this elif block right so and we append 1 to list again here right increment i to 2 i is kind of the ith fibonacci number in the sequence right so when i was 0 we are computing the first fibonacci number when i is 1 we are computing the second and so on 2 is the third fibonacci number right so i is now Two, so we come to this else block, right? And we do L minus 1 is this guy. L minus 2 is this guy. We add them up and append to L. So just as before, we continue until we reach, you know, the when I is, you know, equal to N. We stop there, right? So this is uh, the computing L. Now this part, if you look at the first option, it's the same as 
this line 5 to 7 in the previous option, right? So it's again yes. doing the same thing. But this time, uh, in this option, you can see we're computing L first, this for loop from line 2 to 3. This computes the L completely, right? So 0, 1, 1, 2, and 3. This is computing before, and then we are printing. In this case, we are computing L and printing it at the same time, right? So if you look at this, <clears throat> I's value is at 0, right? And so first, we're going to append what? 0 to L, right? It's going to have just 0 in this line. We increment I. And then increment I to 1, right? And then we come to this for loop. It's a range. It's going to run just one time, right? Range is 0. And just we're going to print L of J, L of 0, which is the 0 at number. And we print a new line. And we go to the next iteration with i equal to 1. So is that clear? Is this option? So how can it run for range 0, sir? Why is it running range 0? Because we're incrementing it right before. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah, i is 0. We do this f statement, and then we increment i if to 1. Now it's 1. If for that last, it wouldn't work for the first time. Yeah. Okay. So this option is also correct. Uh, everyone is clear on this? Yes, sir. All yes, right. Sir. What about this one? This Wrong. is exactly the same as B. But can you spot the difference here? Sir, while loop. Let i equal to n. Yes, while loop. Yeah. This is the one. This is the error here. This equal to in particular. Right. Now this while loop will run n plus 1 iterations. Right. As such, yes. we are not going to calculate n Fibonacci numbers. We are going to compute n plus 1 Fibonacci numbers, which is the wrong answer. Right. So this one is incorrect. Let's move to the next one. What about this one? This one is it's the same as option A. As, yeah, but we are going for i in range n. So uh, we already have 0 and 1, but it no. will all again go to uh, n iterations. We'll yeah, end up getting so, n plus 1 Fibonacci numbers. Why n plus 1? Uh, n plus 2, sorry. Yeah, n plus 2. Do you think we'll actually print n plus 2 Fibonacci numbers? No, sir. It will only print n Fibonacci number, but the first line will be repeated. You can oh, see yeah. that. That 0, you 1. You can see that this. You can see that this only prints the first n Fibonacci numbers, not n plus 2. We are just being wasteful here and calculating two extra Fibonacci numbers, right? So if you want to calculate n, n like n, if n is 5, right? So our output is this. But this for loop is going to calculate 5 and 8 as well, these two extra, right? L will contain these two. but this for loop is the exact same as the for loop in the first option, if you look at it. This nested for loop, right? It's the exact same. So we're just going to end up just printing these numbers on separate lines, right? We'll never touch upon these numbers at all, right? Can you see this? Yes, sir. Are you able yes, to sir. understand this? Yeah. So we'll never touch upon these numbers, although we have calculated them and put them in the list. But this nested for loop will never reach these values at all. We'll only stop out at 3 because the for loop is bounded up to that point. OK, so this option is correct. OK. Any doubts in this one? So please explain it no. again. All right. Not a problem. So if you look at it, you can see that this for loop can, Bumika, you see that the only difference between option D and option A is that in this case, we have N instead of N minus two, right? Yes, sir. So what's going to happen? That uh, instead of you know stopping out at three, it's this for loop in line two and three is going to compute five and eight as well. Do you understand this? Yes, sir. Right. Now this nested for loop here, it's going to 
print the things as usual, right? It's going to print 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 0, 1, 1, 2, 3 into the line, right? Line 1 will be like this, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Right, so if you look at this range, what is this range going from? Range is 1 all the way up to 5, right? Yes, sir. Right, so we're going to print only 5 lines here. Not the, we'll never print these values. Okay, sir. Right, yes, if sir. let's say i takes the last value, let's say i takes the last value. What is the last value in here? It will be 5, right? What yes. will be the range of j? j will belong to the range 0 one. to 4. 0 to 4, right? This one. Yes, sir. Right. So when i equal to 5, so we're going to print l of j first. l of j is l. Uh, so j is, let's say, 0. Right, L of J is what? Zero. Right, and then we print a space. Right, then we do L of J, L of one, this is one, space, L of two, that is again one, space, J is three, L of three is this one, two, space, L of four, which is the last value in the in inner for loop, we print three. Right, and then we print a space again. So this is the last output. Right, this you can see this. Right, and then we exit this inner for loop. We print a new line. We come back again, but i took the last value. Right, i equal we were at i equal to five. Right, and now this outer for loop is also done, and we exit the program entirely. So this is the last line we print. Right. Yes, sir. Now it's clear. Yes, sir. Thank you. We'll never get to these five and eights. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So let's move on to the last question for September 2022 paper. It's this. Sir, what is the correct answer for previous question, sir? So it's this A B options A comma B comma D. A comma B. Only the C option is incorrect. Okay. All right. Sir, so option one n minus two. So, but yeah. the so your concept clear never. Why is it n minus two? Yeah. Because we have n numbers to calculate, right? N Fibonacci numbers, right? Do mm -hmm. hamme se hi de hai hai. Bas hume n minus two or compute karna hai. That is why there is an n minus two here. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll move on to the next question. So this is the thing. R is a zero matrix, which means of size three by three, which means R is equal to zero, 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 zero. This is what R looks like. We have been given P and Q, right? What is the output of the following snippet of code? Right. It's very simple. You have a variable val right initialized to zero for i in range three j in range three so this is the number row number right so this is we're going to use i to index the row and we're going to use j to index the column right so r i j so let's say i equal to zero and j equal to zero so r i j which value is r i j is this one right I hope you understand matrix indexing, everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cij yes, sir. is this, and Qij is this. Q00 is this. Okay. So what we're doing is we're setting the value of Rij to be the product of Pij and the Qij. It's very simple that Rij will be the product of this. So this value will be one times one, right? One times one, so it will be set to one. So can you tell me what is the value of this? The first zero comma zero. One. It's one. What about zero comma one? Two. Yeah, it's two. 
What about minus the product two. of three and this? It's minus three. Minus one. So it is so not doing the usual matrix multiplication. It is just multiplying corresponding values. Right? Yeah. So this just the way you do kind of matrix addition instead of you know adding your multiply, right? So simple okay. thing. Yes. So four times one is four. Five four. times one is five. Six times one minus one six. minus six, right? You do seven, eight minus nine, right? This is R, but it's what does this line does? Can you anybody tell me? It's very simple here. Adds, We're just summing up the value. All elements. Yeah. Elements to yeah. well. And yeah, so we're adding all the elements of R, this computed elements of R to val. So val will be the sum of all these elements, right? So we just do row by row. This is zero. The sum of this is zero. The sum of the second row is three. The sum of the third row is what? Uh, it's nine. It's, what is it? Fifteen. Six. It's six. Six. So the sum is nine. Nine. And this yes. is the answer. And this is the answer. Any doubts? No, no, sir. Uh, no. Uh, please explain line number five. Like, so we're just adding the value of R I J, the R I J that we just calculated to val. That's all, right? So let's say that we computed R I J where so I and J are zero uh, zero. Okay. R I I and J are zero zero. So R I J will be the product of P I J and Q I J. So that's one times one one, right? That's one. And we add this one to the existing value of val. So val was zero in the beginning. Now it becomes uh, one, right? We move on to let's say this value two, right? J becomes one, right? So zero comma one. So p zero one is two, and q zero one is one. We multiply them. The product is two, and we add add that value to val. So two plus one is three. And we do it so on and so forth. Okay. 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 Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, to uh, uh, modify this program as a usual matrix multiplication, uh, we can do like uh, on the right side of equal to sign, we can write R I J plus P I J. Uh, into Q J I is it correct? Which in line four? Yes, sir. In line. Four. So we will need one more loop K there. Yes. Yes. For matrix multiplication, we need a third inner loop. Inner loop in this I to K do the proper K multiplication. K. Yes. Yes. I can K J. It's in the lectures. If you can watch the week four lecture, uh, there, uh, sir, uh, extensively you know shows how to do matrix multiplication. Okay. Yes. All right. So, any doubts in this one anymore? No, sir. Okay. So we'll move to January twenty twenty three paper. All right. And so this is the first question for Jan twenty twenty three. I think you have seen this question. This is coming to the practice assignment as well. Yes, sir. If anybody appended. Uh, yes, yes. Also in I G T week one. Yeah. So, can anybody tell me what is the answer for this? E is a Boolean variable which has some initial value. We don't know it yet. It says that the pattern keeps re repeating for a thousand lines. If line number five hundred is evaluates to false, what is the value of E? False. Can anybody tell me? Sir, for even number of not, it returns to the original value, so it will be false, I guess. Yes, E will be false. False. Yes, e will be false. One thing you not know that. An even number of nots, right? Not operator. Even number of, you know, not operators. Operator. This is the not operator. Does not have an effect. Does not have any effect. This is the thing about. Yes. It, right. So in this case, if you look at this, if E was false initially, not E will become true. Right. In the second line, if you see, not not as I said, even number of not operators do not have any effect. Not and not cancel each other, right? So E's initial value, which is false, stays preserved, right? 
So I hope this is clear. This is a very simple question, actually. Value of a E is false, sir. Yes, value of E is false. Because at line 500, 500 is an even number, right? So you can see from the pattern here on the even number lines, you have even number of knots, right? So at line 500, you know that there will be 500 knots, which is an even number. So it won't have any effect to the original value of E. So E must be false. Okay. Yes, sir. Shall we move on to the next one? Yes. All right. This is also you have seen on, uh, I think, PAs or GAs somewhere. This is also a very simple question. Consider the following code block E1, E2, and E3 are all Boolean variables that have already been defined. X is a variable that has not been defined. Will this code throw an error? Or when will this code throw an error? Can anybody tell me? Sir, question, sir. So many questions, sir. So B1. This one? Yes, sir. You are correct. Why will this be correct, Bhumika? Uh, sir, because X is not uh, not defined before and all the if conditions are false, it will not enter the loop like second, fourth, yeah. and sixth line. So it will not print. Yes. When it's... So, yeah. Then X so is X not is... defined, sir. Yeah. So it's given to us that X has not been previously defined, so it does not exist. Right? If E1, E2, and E3 are all false, right, we never enter lines 2, 4, and 6. Which means when we come to line seven x does not exist at all, and as such, when we try to print something called x, we get an error. So when all three boolean variables are false, this is when the code will throw an error. Okay. Any doubts? All right, no, let's sir. move to the next. One. No sir. Question three. What will be the output of the following code snippet given below? So you have this code here. L is an empty list. Okay, let me just sign it. We want to go from one to what is the upper bound here? Anyone? Nine. 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 If length of L is zero, we add, we initialize something, uh, a variable value, and we add one to the value of i. So what is i right now? i is zero or what uh, it's one i, is, I one. is one yeah the first value of i is one okay what is the length of l it's initially zero, zero. right right yes. so value will be will be two two will be two right and then we come out of this if else block right we append the value to l so two will be the first element yes. right Sir, so after that, we will go to line 7. Yeah, after this if condition, if else condition, we go to line 7. Okay. Right. So now I incre incremented to 2. Okay, we check the length of L. It's not 0 anymore. We have 2 here. Right. So we take the I module as 2. Is 2 divisible three. by 2? Yes. Yes, sir. 2 divisible by 2. So its value is now is zero right zero and that is what we append increment i to three again l is uh, now if you can see that l will never be zero again right so yes. we'll always come to this else block now we'll always come to this else block right so we're just checking now if it's an even number or an odd number if it's an even number the value will store the value zero zero the variable will store the value zero or if it's an odd number, the value will store 1. And that is what we're going to append. So for i equal to 3, we're going to put 1 here. For i equal to 4, it's 0. i equal to 5, it's 1. 6, 0. 7, 1. 8, 0. And last value, 9, it's 1. Clear? Yes, sir. So, which options do you think is the one? Option B. Option Second B. option. B option. 
क्लियर एवरी वन All right. Let's move to for question four. All right. Uh, I think this is also. This also has been in pra yeah. practice assignments. Yeah. Yes. So we're just yeah. Can anyone explain to me what this question, uh, what this code is doing? Then we just take that. Okay. Okay. One at not. a time. One at a time, please. One at a time. It is balancing the string. Mm, a little more, uh, you know, simple in simple words like balancing. At least checking if the small brackets is equal to the large. Cutting the matching pairs of, cutting the matching pairs of, uh, like, uh, brackets. If the opening bracket is closing or not. Yeah, yeah. So we're checking if the number of opening brackets. This is number of. Okay, this is I'm abbreviating. Yes. Number of opening brackets is equal equal to the number of. Closing brackets in the string, right? We are also checking and number of opening square brackets is equal to the number of closing square brackets in the string, and we are also checking the number of opening curly brackets is equal equal to the number of closing curly brackets in the string. If all of these conditions are true, we set match to true. Otherwise, match stays false, right? And then based on the value of match. We're going to print perfect or imperfect. Okay, so based on this understanding, which options do you think are correct? Option A, B, and C. Option A, B, and C. Correct. What about D? It's not correct, right? Because there's only Sir, one of opening sequence matters. Like which Sorry? bracket will come first or which will come later? Yeah, it does not matter here because we're not checking that. We're just checking the counts. Okay, so in whatever order they come across, we uh, you know we don't care about that. Okay. Right, we're just counting here, as you can see in the code here. We're just counting the number of brackets. Right. So A, B, and C are the correct options. Any doubts in this one? No. No, sir. No, sir. sir why option two? Option two. Uh, how many open the color brackets? Right, it's sure. what about opening Option circular brackets? It's zero. Right. What about number of closing circular brackets? It's also zero. Right. So zero is equal to zero, right? And same the case for other two options or other two brackets. Right. Okay, okay. Sir. Yeah. Any other doubts? No, sir. All right. We'll move to question number five. Select all correct implementations of a program that prints the first 10 positive even numbers to the console, one number on each line. This is also you've done. Yes. This is also in practice line. So go ahead. Which one? The, what, the, what about the first option? It is wrong. Yes, it is wrong because the yes, range is, is up to 1 to 10, right? And there are only five even numbers even in numbers. this range. Yeah. What about this, this one? Sir, not included 20, 20, sir. Not, in 20, not 20, including yeah. 20. It's not included in 20. The range is here is 1 to 19, right? Only. And we're going to only print 9 even numbers yes. in this case. Right. What about option 3? It is correct. Yes, this is correct. correct sir. This is correct. We're just changing 20 to 21 here. And now it's going to print all the 10 even numbers. What about this one? This is, this, is also correct. Correct. this is also correct. It's going to this number is just going to print all the even numbers between you know starting from 20 to 2 to 20. And it's going to skip like first is going to print 2, then it's going to print 4, 6. So we are printing only the even numbers. This is also correct. This option? Yeah, that's also correct. Right. It should so, also go to the last one now. Equal to 10 should be there. Which one? In this one, right? Found one, while one. Yes, sir. So let's check it out. No problems. So num, we start at num equal to 2, which is what we, you know, print. So we're going to print count is 0. Right? So first we're going to print 
uh, num 2 we increment num by 2 so we go 4 right count to 1 right so we print 4 again increment 4 by 2 is 6 it's 2 right we print 6 8 make it 3 right we print 8 make it 10 count goes to 4 we print 10 we go to 12 right and uh, this goes to 5 we print 12 this goes to 14 right and this goes to 6 uh, we print 14 this is what uh, 16 now 7 16 print 16 we have 18 here 8 right we print 18 we make it 20 now it's 9 right and we print 20 now now num is incremented to 22 and count is incremented to 10 when right count is incremented 10 here when we go back up the for loop now this condition fails right and we come out of the for loop with num stays at 22 we don't print 22 we only print up to 20 this is the 10 numbers that we were looking for okay, okay. yes yes sir. Clear. what about the so this option is also correct yes. what about the next one this one this is incorrect this is incorrect because you have this equal to here so it's going okay. to print the 22 in addition to yes. here as well so that would make it wrong so this one is incorrect any doubts all right no, let's no, move to question six okay so you have 10 letter but this is also in the practice assignments if you remember right i think it's in the graded assignment no no so you take the word as input, right? You check, you have a 10 letter word that is passed as input to the code. If the output is true, then which of the following statements about the input word are true, right? So what is this code doing? Can anybody tell me? Checking uh, basically vowels at the even. Yes, we're checking if there are vowels at the even indices. If there are, then valid remains true. If we find a consonant in at the at any of the even indices, we set valid to false. Right? This is what this code is doing. So based yes. on this, which options? What about the first option? The, uh, does the word have exactly five vowels? No. No, it can be more. Oh, sir. Yeah. So basically, if we have a ten-letter word, we're going to have at least five vowels because and if for the ten-letter word the output is true for this code which means that at all even indices we have vowels right but the odd indices can have a vowel or a consonant it doesn't matter yes. it doesn't matter for this code right so we need at least five vowels there should be at least five vowels. so first option is incorrect what about the third option the letters that even true. indices are vowels this is true yes true right yes. what about option four that's wrong right because every vowel in the word appears only at even indices this is not true because we have said that at even indices there should be vowels but at the odd there could be vowels there as well not not a problem so this is also in so any doubts in this one sir uh, it is yeah. uh, checking the va it is uh, like checking for the valid to be false at every even one but let's say at the last 10th uh, position there is mm -hmm. a uh vowel so then that mm -hmm. will also uh, not change that there's a 10th position so there is no 10th position the 10 letter word there will be a ninth position at the end right the last index is nine right yes sir so like then take it like if it is vowel then valid will remain false it will not change back to two if it is one valid is initially true in between, say, suppose it is changed to false and then again okay. a vowel comes at the even place. So it will not right. affect that valid. It will yeah, it will not go back to true. Because what we are checking is that in a word, let's say I have A, B, A, C. This is a four-letter word. We are checking. This is the even indice. This is the zeroth. 
uh, this is an in even position this is an even position right yes sir. so we are checking that in all of these even positions there is a vowel right even if there is a one position there uh, we find a consonant we set valid to false forever for this word let's say now i do a b d c right so i come across a which is a vowel fine i ignore b right come to d i find that it's not a vowel so we set valid to false forever right we don't want to change it back to true again because we found a consonant a non vowel uh, in an even position that's what we're looking for valid is defined outside the loop so it is permanently changed yeah it's permanently changed and if we enter line 6 it's permanently changed okay sir thank you okay Move to question number seven. This is also very easy. Nums is a list of positive integers, right? Select all correct implementations of a program that copies all even numbers in nums to a list even nums and store them in the order in which they appear in nums. This is also you have done it in yes. your uh, assignments. So what about the first option? Does it do the trick? Right. Yes, this is right. Okay. We're taking uh, yes. values in nums one by one, checking if they're even, and appending oh. it to even nums. Correct. What about no? This, this one, is not option right. B. Second one. No, sir. Yes, this is. Yeah, this is not correct because we're checking if the index is even. We need to check if the number, the element at index i is even or not. So we are not checking the if the index is even. So this is incorrect. What about option C? This also checks index as even. No, Sorry, it is also yeah. wrong. You can just see that this is also again checking index it to be even. It is checking the index but appending the number, so it is wrong. Yeah, in this case, we're checking the index is even and then appending that e index. But we're here. We're up. What does this code do? It only appends the numbers at even index positions, right? To even nums. Yes. But that is not what yes. we want, right? So that's option C incorrect. What about this one? Yeah, this, this is correct. correct. This is correct. This is correct. So we're checking if the element at i is even or not. If it is, we append it to this one. So this one is correct. Any doubts? No, sir. All right. Sir, why second is incorrect in that? Second is incorrect because we're checking if the index here we're checking the index is even or not. We're not checking if the element itself is even or not. That is what we need to check. If the element is even, but we're checking the index position. Okay. Sir, I did not get this. So, I takes the value from what? Let's say nums is, you know, uh, two, three, seven, nine, eight, right? What do you think should even nums be at the end? Two and eight. What it should contain two and eight, right? So, yeah. what is the range of this? What is should be the range here in this for loop? The range is zero to four. It's going from zero to four, right? This is the range. I takes the value from zero to four. Okay. Right. And then we're checking if you know i takes the value is zero. We're checking is i kind of zero or not. And then we're appending zero to the even nums list. So according to this option, since zero is an even number, we're gonna append end up appending zero to even nums, right? And then go to one, we check that two, we append two and so on. So we are appending these index positions. We need to look at nums i value at these value in the list. We are looking at i. Okay, okay. So that's the problem here with this option. OK, we'll move to question eight. OK, this is a little tricky. Uh, assume L is a distinct positive is a list of distinct positive integers. Consider the following code. Can anyone tell me what this code does, this part? What is S? 
it adds all the elements all in the L. Yeah, it's the sum of all elements in the list. Right. Remember this. Yes. This is a flag, and some variable y equal to minus one here. Right. Now, for x in L, right, we're taking each element in L. We're checking this condition. Right. Checking this yes. condition. If x times len L is equal equal to s, which means is if x s is a multiple of x some element in the list, then we set flag to true. First of all, we set y equal to x, right? To that y to that value, and we break. Okay. So based on this, if let's say flag is true, which means we entered this if block, right? At the yes. end of the execution of the code, which of the options are correct? Is y an element y of the, the list? Average. Yes, sir. Y is an element of the list, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Right. Is y the smallest number in the list? No, no, no it's not me. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what about the third option? Is y is the greatest number? No, sir. No, no, no sir. No. What about this one? Yes, sir. This option is correct. This option is correct. What about this one? No, not correct. No, sorry. Not necessarily correct. Yeah, not, yeah, not necessarily. Correct. It could be or it could not be smaller or a greater. Right. So let me explain it with an example. Let's take. So L. if we arrange that if condition, we can see it is just the average one. Sum of all elements divided by that len of x. Yeah. So you have one, two, three, four, five. Let me explain this. Right. Sum for this is fifteen, right? Okay. Now let's say you know we'll run through this for loop, right? For x in L. So we'll start with one, right? We'll start with one. Whether one times len L. What is len L? It's five, right? Yes. It's five. Length of L is five. Five elements. So x is this right now. Is one times five fifty? No. We move ahead. Two is two times five fifty? No. Is three times five fifteen? Yes. So y stores the value three. Okay. And then we stop executing. Right. Now you can see that y is three. Y is an element in the list because three is part of the list. Right. But what about this arithmetic mean? What about this arithmetic mean? How do we know? For that, you just need to check this condition here, right? X yes. times len L equal to s. This is the mathematical equal to, not the program one, right? The equality sign, right? Now to understand this, can anyone tell me the uh, formula for arithmetic mean? X bar. Equal sum to of all the elements sum. divided and by the number, number of, of elements. Sum of all elements in L divided by number of elements. Now, yes. is not len L equal to n here? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. And this s is not equal to this? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Right? So x bar will be this, right? If you just mathematic, if you bring len L below here, then x and x bar are the same thing so x is the arithmetic mean here okay is it clear to everybody yes, sir. yes. no yes. sir i did not understand how um all right no problem so you understand s is summation of l right i said it here yes here, right len l is equivalent to n right yes yes so uh, let me just divide both sides of this. Consider this as a mathematical equation. I just divide both sides by len L. Okay. So what okay. it will be? X is equal to S by len L, right? Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. So this is n. This is summation. And so x bar should be equal to x, right? Yes. And so x is the arithmetic mean. Yes. yes. Right. But what about this option? Why is the element at index? Means at the middle of the list. Now you can see that you this is you know is at the actually at the middle of the list, but there is no restriction on the order of the list, right? 
which means I can very well shuffle this to be like this. Right. And now three is not at the middle anymore, but still our solution will just be the same. All right. Sir, so that is where the last the option is. Having, so, okay. Sir, if the list is having even numbers, then also it will work. Even number of elements, right? Yeah. No, it will work for both odd number of elements and even number of elements. There's no restriction on that. So uh, uh, mean will be sometimes in the point, right? Decimal points. Um, you could say that, but I think so. But positive integers. So let's. Uh, if you add six, I need an example. Here. If yeah, the same example. Yeah, you, you can take one, two, three, four itself. All right. What is the sum here then? Uh, it's 21. 21. How many elements? Six. Yeah, for this, there is a problem here. Uh, there are six elements. Uh, sorry, six elements. So we can't reach this in particular. Hmm. All right. Let me get back to you on this, actually. I mean, I'm not sure about the even number of elements. All right, uh, can I get back to you on this? Sure, sir. OK. Uh, let's move on to question number nine. Which of the following options swaps the first and the last value of a list with more than two elements? So if we have like 1, 2, 3, we just need it to be 3, 2, 1. Which ones do you think? This is a very simple question. Uh, yeah, first one do. Is it the correct one, this one? No, sir. Length of L. No, no, sir. We are out of the L minus one because the indexing begins from zero and the length is like one more than Yes. Oh, correct. yeah, yeah. This it will be a... give us an array index out of bound error. Len of L. Right? Yes. This one is incorrect. What about this one? Second will do. Yeah. yeah. Second is correct. What about this one? Yeah, this is also correct. Yes, sir. Right. This is also correct. Question. What about and this three? one is also correct. This one is also correct. This is a much more concise version of option yes. B. Okay. Any doubts? No, sir. All right. Uh, question number ten. So this. You just have to run it through the code here. So basically what we're checking is that we take an element, right? Let's say I take this element. I compare it, right, with its element just uh, uh, that appears just to the left of it. The first if block here just compares it with this, right? And then we take, so this is mij. So if i, comma j, so M I J is like this, right? So if this is M I J, right? The second block checks for M J I. So if M I J is this, M J I I claim is this, right? And we compare it to the value just above it, right? J minus one, we are doing J minus one. We are going to a row above it. So for that, again, this will be the value, right? So for mij, we're computing the uh, comparing it with the value just before uh, to the left of it, and for mji, we're computing uh, comparing it with the value just above of it. This is the same case for every element, right? So what this code does is we need to go row by row, right? We have to compute row by row, go by row by row. For each, we're going to compare uh, compare these adjacent values. If we find that they not equal if they are not equal we set index to minus one and we break that's all right we break of the inner out of the inner for loop okay and then yes. if index is indeed greater than zero after this inner for loop is done if index stores the value greater than zero we break out of the outer for loop as well right so let's start i starts from the value zero the range is up to zero to n minus one 
for the inner loop it is 1 to n minus 1 right so j is always starting from 1 right so look at m01 m01 is this right yes right we compare it to the value just to the left of it which is this value you can see they are equal so we you know do nothing we come out of this if block we check the next if block right yes now we look for mji mji so m1 comma 0 m1 comma 0 is this one row 1 column yes. 0 we com compare it with the value just above it now you can see that they are not the same right as such we set index yeah. to minus 1 and we break right we break out of this for loop we come to this index now stores the value minus 1 so we don't break out of the outer for loop we just increment i to 1 which means we start looking at the second row of m okay index is again set to the value of i itself so now it's one previously it was zero now it's one we start again one comma one which is this right we look at the element just before it you can see they are not the same again we break out of the loop here the this break statement is executed we break out index is set to minus one again at this line number 10 we break we check is index greater than zero no so we increment the value of i to 2 we move on to this row of m okay we date the index value to be 2 we started 2 comma 1 again we look to the left again they are not the same we set the value of index to minus 1 and we break again this if we come to this if statement you know that it's not going to work so we move i to 3 right set index to 3 we look at the third row 3 comma 1 is this index right we look at the left position uh, it's they are the same right but now we check m we looked m3 comma 1 we are not going to check m1 comma 3 which one is it it's this one right it's this one yes. and we look compare it with the value just above and you can see that they are not the same again so we set index to minus 1 execute line number 13 we set index to minus 1 we break again again this we uh, come at come here it does not work but now we're done with the outer for loop to entirely it's run its course so we print the value of index which is minus, minus one. 1 right all right i hope this is fairly simple we just have to run this through the code and uh, this is uh, will be fairly easy so I have yeah. a doubt. So for J in yeah. the range, like J checks for the column values. Yes. So for and... this, for this if block, J represents the column values. For this if block, J represents the row value. Okay. You can see that J comes before in here, right? J I, J I, and J minus one I, right? So yes, in this so case, you have the J is representing the row number. In this case, J represents the column number. First one will always be row. Yeah, I is the row number and J is, yeah, so the first index is always the row and the second index is always the column. Yes, sir. Okay. Question 11. Now you can, you know, start uh, with this question, you know, you can start solving it like uh, algorithmically, like what would it do in CT and you know, but it would kind of help you to uh, kind of take a time and understand what this algorithm is actually doing. Okay. So let me walk you through it, what this algorithm is actually doing. We have a number P, variable P initialized to 3. We have a variable N initialized to 25. Count is 0, answer is 0. So we are counting something in this case, and we have to calculate something which we are eventually going to print out. Right while we have this condition p is less than equal to n right so p is the variable that we're going to update as given by this updating incrementing statement here which means we're looking for something in the range 3 to 25 inclusive because it's less than equal to n right we have a flag variable initially set to true now, can anybody tell me what this for loop is doing? It's uh, we have seen this before. I'm pretty sure. 
Yeah, it's checking prime number, but uh, which which for which number actually? For uh, p, sir, like yeah, this three, for loop is checking how many prime numbers are there, right? Yeah, it checks if this for loop checks if p is a prime or not. From two to p, if there is any number which divides it, uh, which yeah. means there is a factor and. Uh, it is not right. Yeah. Sir, so sir, for a, every yeah. range p updated. Yes. So if you look at this, if it checks this for loop entirely checks if p is a prime or not. If p is a prime, flag remains true. If it is not a prime, which means we find an i that divides p, we set flag to false. This is the easy part, right? Now, if flag is true, which means if p is a prime. We increment count. So now you should know that in this range, 3 to 25, we are counting the number of primes. Is that clear? Yes. Number of primes in this range. So 3 is a prime in this range, right? So P equal to 3 is a prime. P5 is a prime. 7 is a prime. 11, 13, 17, 19 and uh, 23. 23 i think i have not missed anything right yes sir. and uh, count the value of count becomes one for p equal to three p is the first value of three it's a prime so count is incremented to one when p is equal to five count is incremented to two at seven it's incremented to three four five six seven eight right so in this range, we are calculate computing the number of primes, and these are the primes, right? Now look at the second if block. It says if flag is true, which means if p is prime, and the count is an odd number. You understand this? It says checks yes. count is an odd number. Then we add p to answer, right? So all this if block is doing is we just all we have to do is we just have to add those primes where count is on odd value. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. If we add these four numbers, that is our answer, the value that is stored in the variable answer. Right. So count is odd here, 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 and here. So that's only those times we'll have to add these values to the value of answer. So if you add these 3 plus 7, 10, 23, 23 plus 19 is 42. And that will be our answer. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Sir. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Now, the following questions are fairly easy. I think we should, you know, breeze past it. What is the type of the following expression? Can anybody tell me? It's integer. It's an integer yes, because there is no operator here that generates a float. This is an exponentiation, multiplication, float division, and modulo. So it's an int. What about the second question here? What is the type of the following? String. 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 Correct. This is a string. I don't think there should be a doubt in that. What about this one? This is a float. Float value. We have a normal division operator here that generates a float. Any doubts in this one? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. All right. We'll move on to question 13. So this is the question. We have been given this uh, particular code block here that takes the values of A and B. Right? A and B are Boolean variables. Right? Based on the above data, answer the given sub questions. What is the output? Which of the following output is correct for A equal to true and B equal to true? So if you look at these four sub questions here, it's taking all possible combinations of A and B, right? And for all yes. those combinations, what will be this output that this code will produce? So let me just draw a truth table, A, B, right? And let's say V is the output of this code. Right. So for A true, B true, which is the first question, what about A true, B false, A false, B true, and A false, B false. 
so what about the first option what uh, it will print true. a or b it will print true yeah it will print true because we are going to enter this first block here right because yeah. a is true will enter the if block and then we are going to print a or b we are going to evaluate a or b first so since both are true we are just going to print true so v will be true right what about the second yeah. one again print true yes sir. yeah yes, it will sir. again print true because a is true we come back here again into the if block a or b since a one is true so the entire uh, this will evaluate again to true right what about this one third one this will again print true. true right since a is false but b is true we enter the elif block now right what a is false and what is not b not b is also false, false. so false, false or false will be false but then not false will make it true true and so v is true what about this f r f false this is true true this will be true so we enter since a and b both are false we enter this f else block right since a and b are both false this and operation will give you false but then again not false will turn it into true right is that clear yes, yes. Yes. So this is very the last two questions that we have looked at are kind of like uh, very easy questions, kind of like they are giveaways, like free marks. So please make sure that you score in these. Okay. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So that's Jan twenty twenty three paper, right? I'm gonna hand it over to Dhruv now. He is going to take the May twenty twenty three paper. I'll be in the session, but uh, he'll be taking the twenty May twenty twenty three. So, Dhruv, are you there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so please continue, okay? Yeah, uh, I need to share my screen also. Very good, Dhruv. Nice, my screen is good, right? Yes, sir. Uh, so. I am starting with the May 23 Python paper. So the first question is, yeah, given two inputs and two if conditions, and if they satisfy, you are printing something. So the question is, for what value of uh, inputs, the above code does not produce any output. So we just have to look for cases that do not satisfy these conditions. Because if they satisfy, then we are printing. But we don't want them to satisfy. OK? It's like 10 and 25, both will satisfy the conditions. So this is not a, uh, this is not the correct option. 6 and 20 again satisfied, 12 and 15. The first condition is satisfied, but here it is greater than, not greater than or equal to. So we'll fail at this condition. That is why we won't be printing anything more. So this is our correct option. Any doubts on this? Yeah. No, no, sir. No, sir. Yeah. Sir, it says it will uh, not produce any output, but will run without any error. How so? So, if condition, if you fail an if condition, that is not an error, right? Okay, yeah. A is already defined. Oh, yeah, and un un understand. This is string. string. Yes. What is the output of the following? Okay, so this is string con uh, concatenation, and as you know, till your means eight is not included. So str1, we'll just write Python, then we'll add a space, and we have to go till eight, but eight is excluded, okay? So we can start from programming, right? Python program. We'll go till your, okay? So we'll have Python space program. And then we have to print the length of the string. So Python is six plus one for the space. And again, we have eight letters. Eight only, yeah. 
So the answer should be 50. Guys, any doubts? No, sir. So, uh, yes, sir. Yes. Sir, 8 till 8. Till index 8, no, sir? Yes, 8 is not included. Remember in Python, oh. even in range function, when you use range 8 or you're using string indexing, str till 8. So this means 8 is not included. Till 7. But if we add 1 till 8, will 1 be included or not? One yes, one is included. Is included. One is included. Eight is not included. Okay. Okay. Guys, any other doubts? So here we are doing a sum of zero to seven numbers, yes, sir. Sum? Uh, I mean, we just have a string, right? Yes. Sir. So, it's so like how fifteen comes? The printing the length of the string. Like I said, Python str one. Then we are using the plus operator. Plus operator for strings means we are just adding up those strings. It doesn't mean they are integers. You just have to write one after the other, right? So it's like Python. Then we have a space here. And then we have str till 8. I just calculated that it's program, right? Yes. It's it like is. what is the length of the string? It's 50. String concatenation. Yes, sir. Good. Okay. What will be the output? If the input D is 437. Okay. From your Joseph's days, integer division 365. We know 437 is by 365 will be one point something, right? Integer division will give us the one. And then we are doing days more 365. So, I mean, we can just subtract 365, 437 minus 365, we'll get 72. 72. And then 72 more more 7 will give us oh. 10. Yes, 10. This is 1, this is 10. And remaining days. Again, more 365, we'll have 72. Again, more 7, so we'll uh, have two. a remainder of 2. So, we'll have years 1, weeks 10, and remaining days 2. Guys, any doubts? No, sir. No, sir. My screen is still visible, right? Yes. 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 The following. So we are given two values. We just have to go through the Apple's condition. Is 15 greater than 20? No, it's not. Is 15 less than 20? Yes, it is. So here we have y is 20 minus 15. We have higher answer. Do you guys have any doubts or should I continue? Please continue. Awesome. Yeah. So it's like we are given two values and C is our input. So it's based on which of the option is correct. So values for C are given. So let's go option by option. First, we'll take C is equal to 5. So if A is greater than B, is 4 greater than 7? No, it's not. Then we'll move to the else block. And now B is 7. First option is 5. Is 5 less than 7? No. Then no. We'll go to the else block. We'll print E. First option says it will print B, which is wrong. If C is 10, again, A and B values don't change. We just have to come to this condition directly. 7 is less than 10. This is true, right? So we'll print D. But the option says A. Again, this is wrong. If C is greater than or equal to 8. So anything which is greater than or equal to 8 will satisfy this condition, right? 
So we'll always print D here. And this says always D. So this option is correct. If C is less than 7, it means that we'll always fail the condition and we'll always print D. And the answer says D, which is wrong. Guys, any doubts? No, sir. No, sir. Output of the like, A is phi, B is phi. So it's like A is phi and A is our outer loop. So we know we'll have phi rows, and for each row, we, we are printing this. So D minus X initially, uh, we know B is phi, and initially X uh, is 0 to A, right? So phi yes. minus, yeah, phi minus initially will have 0. So and the step parameter is minus one and one. Oh. We are going phi to one and with step minus one. It's like we are going phi four three two one. Okay. Two will not be there. Sir, but one will not be included, no. One so will, will not be there. Stop one function will, will stop uh, one step below before. The output will have one. Yeah. No, sir, but because we are printing we'll one, separate. one because the, the one sixth, is the sixth line has that one, that's why it is having one. But uh, as for the loop, it will not be okay. Okay, no, okay, you're yes, saying that you are printing one. Okay, okay, I get the point. Yeah, so this loop will go. Uh, you are right, it will not go till 1, it will stop before 1, we will print 5, 4, 3, 2 and we are ending with a space, so it's like 5, 4, 3, 2 and then we are going to this line, we have not specified the end parameter, we are printing 1 and then we are moving to the next line. And in the second case, in uh, we had uh, 5 minus 0, uh, so the second loop, we are going till b minus x, right? In the first case, x was 0. Now x will be 1, right? So we'll start from 4. In this case, we'll have 4, 3, 2. Again, we'll stop at 2. We are printing at 1. And just like that, we'll continue. OK? Guys, any doubts? No, sir. <laughs> Okay, we have to shift the key by two places and so it's like we know our alphabet goes from A to Z and 1 to 26. So it's like uh, we'll have to, if we want Z to go till A, we'll have to use mod, right? Yes. Do okay. you get my point? So we yes, have sir. to shift by two. This was Caesar cipher was covered in one of the lectures we had also. It's shifting by two places. So k will be two. And then we'll have to, when we add this two, we'll use more 26 at the end to go back just in case we exceed 26. Okay. In the first option, we are multiplying by two. This is obviously wrong. In the second option, we are adding two, but we are using mod 25. So again, this okay. is wrong. The third option, adding two, and we are using integer division. That's not mod. What? Yeah, and adding two and mod 26. So this is a correct option. Guys, any doubts? Sir, so, uh, can Let's you explain that how mod 26 will help in looping backwards? Bhumika, you should watch the Caesar cipher video. I mean, this is clearly explained. Like, if you uh, suppose you're on Z and you need to move forward two places, but you'll have to go back to move forward. Right? There's not, no alphabet in front of Z, so we'll have to repeat it. So we have 26 alphabets. Suppose we add two here. So we want Z to go to B, right? Yes, sir. That is why we are using more 26. Just in case we exceed it, we can go back to our original stream. We can start from A again. Okay. Yes, sir. Select so line number five. 
सर लाइन नंबर फाइव कैन यू एक्सप्लेन होल लाइन सर गाइस एनीवन हु डजंट अंडरस्टैंड दिस शुड गो बैक टू द सीजन साइकिल विद यू सो इट्स लाइक वी हैव टू पुश दिस थिंग वी हैव टू यू नो we don't want it to be visible as it is we want z to be represented as b a to be represented as c so we are just going ahead two letters at a time okay so what we are doing is we are running through a loop for each alphabet and alphabet dot index of i so it's like for every letter what we are doing is first we are getting the index we'll get index 26 for z We have this alphabet string, right? We'll get the index twenty six. No, I guess twenty five. Right? We'll start from zero. Zero to twenty five for our alphabet alphabets. Z is twenty five. We are adding two. We have twenty seven. But our A to Z is only till twenty five, right? Then we're using more twenty six. More twenty six will give us one. One. So we are starting from zero, zero, one. So we get a B. So we are we are doing this for every letter. We are just encrypting it. Okay. Okay, I got it. Which helps that calculate the sum of series up to n two. Okay. I guess we'll have to look at the option. Number of terms is five. Start term is zero. So we should do this. Okay. Start term. In this case, is one. So, guys, do you want me to take an example and then show you? I mean. Yeah, sir. That would be helpful. Okay. So let's just calculate. So start number is one. We are multiplying by ten, and for i in range number of terms, it's like we're going one till five, and then we're adding, and sum is sum plus. This I mean, this is just rubbish. You guys understand why this is not this ring? Yes, yeah, first two element is. Yes, sir. Okay. I mean, we will just look at the correct code and give her like an explanation. So we have to num is given phi. What we have to print is sum till phi, and one plus one two. Plus one two three plus one two three four plus one two three four five. Okay. So n is initialized as five already. So this is our outer loop. So we are going one element at a time. And some of sequences start. We are starting at one. So initially it will be one and start number we are multiplying. The sum is initially zero. I'm sorry. Okay. Initialize it to be zero. Now we are adding one. Sum is now one and start number now is. We're just going ahead one place. I mean, if you multiply one, add ten. And add this, so it's like one is moving to the tens. It is a uh, tens place, and i plus one is a new units place, right? right? Yes, sir. Am I able to explain it properly? Yes, sir. Or should sir. I run this code? It's like we have ten now, and now we are adding. We need two now, right? That is why we are adding i plus one. So. What will happen the next time? We have twelve. We'll multiply by ten. Then again, we are adding i plus one, which is three now. So we'll have one, two, three. Now again, we'll multiply by ten. Now we are adding i plus one again, which is four. We'll have one, two, three, four. 
and we're just storing the sum in the sum variable okay yes sir clear guys any doubts no sir so please explain line number 6 again line num okay so it's like we are starting with 1 every time i'm multiplying with 10 and i'm adding i plus 1 okay so i initially is 1 i'm adding 1 so we'll have 12 now again in the next iteration of the loop i'll multiply it by 10 i'm adding i plus 1 we'll have 120 plus 3 120 and that again i'm multiplying by 10 it's like every iteration of the loop will give us this and we just have to store the sum right guys are yes. here yes sir clear yes sir clear, oh. yes, sir, clear. Sir. Yes, sir how to approach this in the exam actually how we can go to the narrow down the correct option mm. we need to execute all the four and then find i will have to look at all the options i mean here you can see that it uh, doesn't go to the last number you can eliminate this option directly in the first identify sum we are uh, calculating a uh, sum should come here i mean first we have to add one what we are doing here is we are adding from 12 so it's like we are going 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 so this is wrong so it's like just compare the option how are the options different so it's like these three initialize uh, initializations are the same right so you can just skip it and now you can just compare the option again. Okay. Uh, sir, just a second, sir. Sir, can you explain line number six in this option, sir? So the answer I already explained it twice, right? It's like we have one. We are multiplying by ten. Then we are adding i plus one. No, sir. No, sir. Line number six in this option first wrong. In this yeah. option, when in the correct option, what we had was these two was switched. So it's like in the first we we were adding. we need some variable to store the sum right our question is we need this sum yes sir okay so what so start I... number is storing are these elements at every iteration of the loop we need some variable to store the sum right so it's like sum is equal to previous sum plus this new number so it's like first sum was this then sum was this then sum was this oh, okay okay i got it Okay. At the end, we'll have the final sum of final. Um, so, yes. why we initialize num terms equals to five? They're given, right? We have to add till final. That is in the question I asked. Okay. Okay. Assume two, three, four, five is given as input to the four. Which of the following is correct? This is our input. R is equal to one. Okay, digit. It's like the variable name that itself giving you a hint. Okay, so mod ten will have five, and R num is initially one. It's like the multiplying one by zero this is just like this uh, last question in this case we are adding uh from reverse i mean we are using mod 10 right it's like we'll yes, take this element and then we are dividing integer division by 10 so it's like we are just eliminating this element again what we'll do is we'll multiply this by 10 and we'll add 4 again multiply this by 10 and then we'll add 3 Which like we'll have one, five, one, and the reverse version of this. This should be the answer. Yeah, one, five, four, three. Guys, any doubts? No, sir, it's clear. Sir, please explain line number five, four, and five. So four is you're using the mod ten, right? So two, three, four, mod ten. 
It's like more 10 gives you the uh, digit at the last place. So you will have five. And what R num initially was one. We're multiplying it by 10. Then we are adding the digit. Okay. So this will happen every time. We have 15. We'll multiply by 10. Then we'll add the next digit, which is 4. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Select all the codes in here. Magic number. Leaves remainder 0 when divided by 7. But when divided by 2, 3, 4, and 6, we need a remainder 1. Okay. Let's go option by option. Flag is equal to 0. And when flag is 0 and it is divisible by 7. Okay. It's like i in range 7. If n mod i is equal to, is equal to 1. It's like for 2 to 6, we are checking here that if the number number is divisible by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and leaves the remainder 1, then we are initializing flag to be 1. This is wrong, right? I mean, uh, this should be 0. Yes. And because we want this condition to be a magic number. So this condition yeah. should be either not equal to or the flag either should be 0. And we should switch it. So that is why they have given 0 and 1 instead of 2 and false just to confuse you. So yeah, I mean, this is our correct option, right? Like I just explained. A uh, flag will be false. Just assume 1 is false. Then the remainder is not 1 magic number we want it to be one we when divided by two to six we want the remainder to be one and when divided by seven we want it to be zero and we'll have a magic number guys any doubts no sir no, no sir Sir, why it is dividing by 7, so? So the answer, please. I mean, ask the question when I'm doing it, right? I already moved on to the next question. We are 10 minutes. Sir, line number 7, sir. The answer, can you turn off your mic? Yeah. So the thing is, we want the magic number to be when divided by 2 to 6, we want the remainder 1. When divided by 7, we want the remainder 0. So when 7 remainder 0, this is very clear. When flag is equal to 0, when will flag be 0? Flag is already initialized to be 0. If we don't satisfy the condition that the remainder is not 1, then we initialize flag to be 1. In this case, it will fail here. Right? We have an AND condition. Sudanshu? Yes, sir. Got it. Okay. What will be the output on for I in range 8? Size is length of the list. L minus 2, size minus 2, size minus 1. So, I mean, size is given the length. So, it's like we're just uh, getting the last element and the second last element. And we are adding it, uh, multiplying it to 2 and appending it to our list. So initially we have minus 1 and 1. It's like we'll add it and append it, uh, multiply by 2. So we'll have 0. And then we are appending it to our list. So our new list is 1, 1, 0. Now again, we'll add these two elements, multiply by 2 and append it to our list. Again, add these two, multiply by 2. Add these two, multiply by two, and we have to do this seven times. It's like zero was our first. No, let's use zero. You can do this, right? 16 into two. Yes. Okay. Zero to four. So we can choose that option. Zero to four is the only option. Guys, any doubts? No, sir. OK. 
can correct implementation of the program that tends the first 10 prime numbers of first 10 prime number it is given that it, they are less than 50 it's a multiple select question so let's go option by option the, you know one is not a prime number it's a prime number has factors 1 comma n one is not a prime number we'll start from 2 and it is given that all the prime numbers are less than 30 so it's like this is correct if we uh, if the checking for prime is also correct so for j in range 2 int of 5 at plus 1 okay for each number let's take 5 we'll go 5 by uh, by 2 will give us 2 right and 2 plus 1 so we'll go to 3 to check if it is prime okay so you guys know that uh, prime numbers occurs in pair right it's like uh, let's take a number suppose we have 20 what are the factors of 20 1 3 7 and 21 so we know that these occurs in pairs 21 and 1 occur in pair 3 and 7 occur in pair so even if we do it till here if we know that uh, if we just go half the way that if uh, none if none of these numbers are a factor we know that we won't have a factor after that also. guys do you get this Yes, sir. Yes, no, sir. sir. No, sir. No, sir. Oh, and also five by two will give us the two point five. The division. Yeah, but using int, right? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, uh, I mean, prime numbers, uh, not prime numbers. All factors occurs in pair, right? Let's take a different number. Let's take twenty-seven this time. So. Factors of 21. 1, 3, and 9. Nine. Yeah, and 27. Seven. Se how is 7 a factor of 27? Sorry. And 27. Like I said, all these occurs in pair. That 1 and 27 give us 27. 3 and 9 give us 27. So it's like if you check till halfway the number and you're just including plus one for the sake of suppose you have 3.5 so you need to uh, you know check this also just in case you can have 25 in that case phi itself is a factor right that is why we have a plus one condition here but uh, in general even if we check half the way we'll know if our number is prime or not Guys, am I yes, clear? sir? Clear, okay. Oh, okay, yeah. So, this is a multiple select option. We have to look at the next option also. I mean, instead of going half the way, we are just going all the way. This is obviously correct. I'll count this. Uh, so, instead of uh, you know, limiting ourselves. It was given in the question that all prime numbers, all the first 10 prime numbers are less than 30. But suppose it was not given. So then we can keep a counter also, right? That we only want the first 10 prime numbers. We're going 0 till 9. So these are the first 10 prime numbers. We'll have our first 10 prime numbers. Guys, any doubts? And again, we're using the same logic. We can go half the way. Guys, any doubts? Or should I move on to the next question? Sir, I don't understand this question. Ved, I mean, uh, given that we have to check uh, first 10 prime numbers, right? Where exactly do you have it? Ved? Yes, 
सर कैन वी गो टू द स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ द नंबर टू चेक द फैक्टर यस एंड स्क्वायर रूट इज ऑलवेज स्मॉलर देन द हाफ ऑफ इट दिस गिव इट मोर हम्म गाइस एनी डाउट और शुड आई मूव ऑन सर व्हाई वी आर डूइंग द फ्लोर डिवीजन विद 3 और 5 सोनम कुड़ी टोन ऑफ एम फ्लैग इज इक्वल टू ट्रू और आई एंड रेंज दिस इज ट्रैवर्सिंग द मैट मैट्रिक्स एवरी एलिमेंट एट अ टाइम सो इट्स लाइक आई इज नॉट इक्वल टू जे दिस जस्ट मींस नॉन डायगोनल एलिमेंट्स वी डोंट वांट दैट वी डोंट वांट जीरो एट अ नॉन डायगोनल एलिमेंट्स एंड एट अ डायगोनल एलिमेंट्स वी डोंट वांट वन और विल इनिशियलाइज a flag to fold in this case and we have to okay so let's look at the options it given that our code prints true so guys we'll have to check the negation of this condition okay false false okay right? guys yes sir yes sir so the given this matrix So we'll just reverse. Ah, oh, I mean. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. This will print true. Ah, oh, I mean, I'll just explain it for others. Then non-diagonal elements should not be zero. Non-diagonal elements are not zero, right? I'm sorry, let me just try again. Ah, oh, um, this is the ah uh, diagonal elements should not be one. But we have diagonal elements as one, and non-diagonal elements should not be zero. But all our non-diagonal elements are zero. So we'll uh, fail both these conditions here, and flag will remain. Guys, any doubts? Sir, how it is true, sir? This this example. Yes, sir. Let's start again. So, the given identity matrix of size three, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, flag is already initialized to be true. We don't. We want them to fail these conditions because our output given is true. Okay. We want it to fail these conditions. So, I is not equal to zero. That just means the non-diagonal elements, right? All these elements and all these elements. Okay, this should not be equal to zero. Does this satisfy the condition? Sudansh, sir, I am confused, sir. Sir, in this case, what is the sir value of i and j, sir? In this example, i and j we are just iterating through every element, ah, uh, every element of the matrix, right? We are traversing through the matrix, each row yes. and each column. Sir, in the first iteration, i equal to one and j equal to n. What? I is equal to one, zero, zero, right? Oh, sir. So, Dan, you are clear with your concepts. Sir, I am confused. Range dilemma, right? We are given this one zero zero. We have a nested list. Okay, we have a nested list. The first we are calculating the length of the list. We have three lists, right? Length is three. Yes, sir. Okay, so yes, sir. I and J both will go from zero to two. Zero, one, two. Zero, one, two. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. When we get inside these loops, what we are checking is I should when I is not equal to J. This 
first element is 0, 0, right? This is 1, 1. This is 2, 2. These are our diagonal elements. Yes, All sir. the upper triangle and the lower triangle are our non diagonal elements, right? When i is not equal to 0, okay? It's given that this should not be equal to 0, but we already have 0. Right? So we'll fail this condition and we'll not enter. In. Okay, sir. Got it. Okay. And similarly, for the diagonal elements, we don't want it to be 1. But in this case, we have 1, right? Yes, sir. We okay. have 1. Yeah, so we're failing both the conditions. So initially it was 2, it will remain 2. So this is a correct option, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Guys, any other doubts or should I move on to the next question? We can move on. Reverse the sentence based on the words. So we can reverse it. We can just use this split function in Python. Right? Uh, we'll have to go option by option, choose all the options in that except and print the modification. Okay. So when we use the split function, we'll have each word as a each word as an element in the string uh, in a list tree guys yes, we'll sir. have to reverse it right so uh, again yes, we know indexing starts from zero and goes i uh, mean uh, n minus one right so we're starting from zero okay and again we'll stop uh, stop before reaching this element but we can print it Guys, am I clear? Any other doubts? Yes, sir, clear. Sir, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sir, so why space is added after uh, in print statement? And uh, I mean, is also we have to reverse the string, right? I mean, it's given that we have this string. We want to reverse yes. it as a word. But when we use the split function, what will happen when we use the split function? All the spaces will be removed, right? Each this will have a separate string. So when we print it, we'll print Python. We are starting from the back. We are printing a space. This stopping before the first element. And then we are printing board zero, right? Aditya? Uh, yes, sir. I understand. Thank you, sir. Okay, guys, I mean, this question, Bas, were just discussed, right, at the beginning of the session? Yes. Yeah. So I guess that's it. We're done with the May 23. Okay, guys, then uh, it's already four. I'll meet uh, you yeah. tomorrow. We'll Dhruv? discuss September 23. Yeah, Dhruv, uh, I just, just wanted to discuss one more question. In the Jan 2023 question, uh, I said that I'll get back to you on that question. So I have found the answer. Uh, just let me share my screen. Yes, yes, please. Yeah. So uh, someone suggested that, you know, I originally took the example of list only up to one to five right remember that this question yes, sir. where you know y is an element of l and we determine yes, that sir. y is an arithmetic mean right so someone suggested that if we add six here then what would happen right so in that case flag will remain false will never enter this will never pass this condition right can you find let's say for this case s will be what 21 right the sum of all elements yes yeah so can you find any number for which, you know, if you multiply it with the len of L, which is 6, will you get 21? We won't get any 21 for any of these values, right? No, sir. No, right? Yes, and sir. as such, therefore, we'll never enter in line 9 to 11. So flag will remain false, right? So this is a kind of, uh, it will, flag will be false for this input, right? So we it is given to us that flag is true right after this algorithm so in that case the op uh, uh, input i took 
this produces true okay for this the flag will remain false so if the right. flag would be given as false in the question then why will uh, would not be the element of list right sir so flag is initially set to false right after we are done with this code after this code is uh, executed as an entirety we want that it's saying that flag is true right so for this of okay. input right for this input len l is equal to 6 right so 1 times yes. 6 if can you find any number multiply it with 6 right it won't produce 21 right the product of any so, of these numbers two. with 6 will not produce 21 so we'll never pass this condition at all and so flag will never be set to true uh, will never break and all that will never execute line 9 to 11. so i was asking that uh, if in the question it is given that flag is false then why will, okay. uh, will not be the element of list that i was asking sir. if flag is false yes sir. if flag is the, uh, means let's say instead of true it was false right yes sir yes sir that's how so in that case i don't think uh, the question would be set in a different manner i think they have set it in that uh, keeping this particular detail in mind so that's something that you know you should ask the question center yes. yeah yes sir. so i hope this is this part is clear mm -hmm. for this input you know we'll get flag is false so we'll never you know uh, this it does not you know, come into question for this particular question yes understood sir. right thank you sir. so yes. okay so i think we'll stop the session uh here right Dhruv will be taking tomorrow's session we'll dis further discuss uh, i think september excuse 23 me, sir. questions excuse me so just have a yeah. small query actually i just want to know that uh on 25th we have the exam so yeah. as i choose two subjects python and stats one so okay. there'll be both exams like python yeah both be, exams uh... yeah both so exams we'll... will be conducted on sunday no no we'll be writing the code or what no no you'll be doing okay. something like what we have done this entire session output questions like uh, uh yeah things will be... okay MCQs. And we we are just uh, we are just given by two time like two hours only like it's like uh, one hour each for each question okay but i think it was supposed to be 1.5 for both uh, for one subject it was i think it is for final exams end term exams it's for term term in yeah end term okay, yeah okay. for quizzes you only get one hour per uh, okay subject. and uh, there was one more query i think you might not be able to but just want to know uh, as if I've, I've qualified stats one in my qualifier only so okay. is it going to be that worth it or something like my score will be if i don't even give stats my previous score will be uh, noted or what? Did you? Uh, is this your first term? I don't think it's a first term. No, no. Stats right one is already stats one competition thinking, maths one and English one is already being qualified for the quiz one in my qualifier. Okay. And now again, I'm giving the this quiz one again for the Python. And if no, I no, you go, have to give it. You have to give it uh, again because that one, was yeah. for your qualification, not for your whole term. Okay, it's just for yeah. like sake of just giving. Okay yeah for the qualification yeah. okay and python will also be just for qualification or it will no, be python was not part of the qualifier you'll have to give yeah yeah the exactly and we have two opps like when they will be occurred uh first one is march 10 and the second one Dhruv, do you know with when is the second opp so i think we have four exams for python right i mean quiz one quiz two two oppps and then the end term is yeah. that what is okay. yeah Pre-written oh, and two OPPs. There is no quiz two in Python. Okay, there is no quiz two in Python. Okay, only, only one quiz one, and two, two OPPs. OPPs and end term, for example. Yeah. Okay, four that's it. That's it. Thank you so much. Okay. So, all right, guys, we'll end the session here. Uh, good luck for your quiz quizzes. Dhruv will be taking tomorrow's session. So, please uh, practice and good luck for your quiz. Okay. Hello, sir. Just one Hello, question sir. from my side. One question last yeah uh i actually wanted to ask that uh, uh we have the quiz on uh sunday so uh, will we have the time assignment of for week five on friday saturday and sunday because uh, that will be hectic to manage no, no there will uh, be no practice assignment in the quiz week okay okay okay
timed assignment uh, and uh, are you sure through the, there will be no timed assignment on the yes yes there is no timed assignment in the quiz okay thanks uh, sir i have a technical doubt sure yeah last